so much of remote is not this idea of lecture, you know, where you have a teacher, student, or a leader, a subordinate. But when you're in a remote environment, it's like everybody's in a circle. Like right. it's now it's collaborative, mm -hmm. whether it truly is collaborative or not, but you have to treat it as like a collaborative environment. <laughs> Everyone. Welcome back to Project She Leads. My name is Nori Joaquin, your host. This is your first time with us. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will consider subscribing. So last week was part one of Leading Remotely, and today we are going to jump in into part two. If you missed part one, we talked about a lot of the benefits and some of the challenges that go with working in a remote world. If that is you, I think that you'll find a lot of that content will resonate with you. So we're going to continue this conversation with my guest, Charnel. Welcome back, Charnel. Thank you. It's so good to be here, Nori, and I look forward to having our conversation again today. Last week was so fun. Yes. So last week we talked about some of those, those challenges mm -hmm. and we mentioned communication being at the right. very top of the list. But communication, because there's increased communication, it also can be a way that we can actually become more effective yeah. as we lead remotely. So what are some of the ways that you use communication to, to leverage it? Yeah, um, you know, one of the biggest things I always think about is um, all the different little nuances of how we communicate yes. and how they seem to be even more important um, in a remote setting. So I think about body language. Right. You know, when you're on camera and you're on a Zoom call and you have your little square there, you know, how are you coming across right. in the meeting? And I chuckle because I think so many times we think we're doing one thing when we're really communicating something else. Right. right. Um, you know, uh, is it that we need to smile more because we come off as maybe um angry or not engaged or just not interested at all. Mm -hmm. And that is not our intention, but by simply smiling, um, I think of how many times, you know, as leaders leading a meeting, meaning the individual that's facilitating, we have to take an extra effort to engage everybody. And so a couple of things that I have found to, um, that have been great for engaging um, individuals that I work with in a kind of a Zoom meeting has been the idea of leaning in. Okay. And yeah, you know, you think of like back in the day when you're at an interview or something, they say, you know, don't sit back like right, this, right. but really engage by leaning in. I think it's the same way when you're on a mm -hmm. video call of just really leaning into the camera and having the camera at eye contact. You know, these are so little small tactics, but they make a big difference in how you come across so that your message can be received. You know, because um, we want to have a powerful message or a meaningful conversation, and it's not received because of our body language right. and how we're coming across. So I think about that, and then the power of your words. So, you know, you might have, like I said, a challenging conversation that has to happen over a Zoom or a lot of content. Um, I you know I often do a lot of presentations or strategy sessions with my clients, and there's just a lot of like academic or a lot of strategic information that we have to get through. But how can you break that up mm -hmm. so that it's received, you know, in a remote setting? Yes. Um, and so there's so many ways that you can do that. But the biggest thing is the power of the pause. The right, power of right, just really yes. being able to say, okay, I'm going to communicate all this information, whether it's over a shared screen or whiteboard or all the different tools. But take a moment to stop and to pause and right. allow the individual on the other side to um, be a part of the conversation because... So much of remote is not this idea of lecture, you know, where you have a teacher, student, or a leader, a subordinate. But when you're in a remote environment, it's like everybody's in a circle. Like right. it's now it's collaborative, mm -hmm. whether it truly is collaborative or not, but you have to treat it as like a collaborative environment. Right, right. And I love that because in order to take that pause, you really have to be a really good listener. And I think yes. that's one of the things that I've kind of pulled away with having so many more meetings. Mm -hmm. So especially if you are not on camera, 
And I would say probably 75% of the meetings that I'm in are typically not on camera, mm-hmm. which I really appreciate. Yeah. But you do have to really listen really, really yes. well because sometimes people may suddenly try to interrupt mm-hmm. and you'll kind of hear them stutter just a tad. Yeah. And so if you're really paying attention, you know, to all of that, then it allows you to to stop and say, okay, maybe instead of pausing where I thought I was going to pause, maybe mm-hmm. this is a perfect opportunity to pause. Yeah. Because I've been in meetings where people have wanted to speak up. The presenter isn't giving them that opportunity. opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so then they just end up not asking their question yeah. at all. Yeah. And really the purpose of any type of meeting is to make sure that, uh, you know, information has been shared. Everyone's on the same yeah. page. Right. You know, everything's been communicated well. Mm-hmm. So you really do have to be, you know, a much better listener right. than maybe you were before. Yeah. You want to, con- if you're presenting, you want to control the energy exactly. in the room, mm-hmm. you know, or on the screen, if you will. And um, people shrink. Like if they are like, oh, I got a question. Oh, you know, yeah. or I raised my hand and you're ignoring or they just tend to shrink and they're just, there's so many other distractions. And we talked about that on part one. There's so many other things that are happening. You might have the dog in the background, you know, you've got a kid crying, whatever it is that it's easy to turn my attention to that. If this person's not going to answer questions or they don't really, they've got to get their point across, I'm going to disengage. I'm going to start pulling up Google or handling my email. So it's, you're so, it's so easy to do that. Right. now. So by pausing um, and allowing um, individuals to digest what you've already said, to allow for questions, to offer up comments and create room to actively for you now to listen to them, keeps them engaged and it allows your message to go so much further. Right. And I think if you are on camera, mm-hmm. then you do, as you mentioned, yes. you pay attention to yourself, to yes. your body language, that you are looking in the camera. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people have their camera like facing the side of their yes. face. Or it's above their head. Yeah, they're not actually looking <laughs> at everyone else. They're looking yeah. at something else. Yeah. So I think it's important to stay engaged where you're actually looking at the camera. You're looking mm-hmm. at the person who's speaking wherever their tile falls yes. on your screen, <laughs> that you're smiling and, yeah. and that you show that you are interested mm-hmm. in what's actually taking place. I think it goes so far. Right. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I remember you know, if you're sitting around a table in an office setting, um, there's you usually have opportunity to like prepare and you can read if somebody's presenting or you can take notes. And there's so many dynamics that you can pull off of when you're in a remote environment. You can't necessarily do all of that because you are trying to look, you know, at the presenter and you're trying to engage. And so there is this power of a pre-read. Mm -hmm. And the idea of leveraging the time before a meeting, especially if you're presenting, to engage your audience. So Mm -hmm. are there materials or things that you can send beforehand to allow everybody to get up to speed or to just know what you're going to be talking about so that when you get into a remote situation, they're not you know, trying to pull up the document or trying to know what you're talking about or trying to squint and look at the PowerPoint that you're sharing or, (laughs) you know, they can now be more prepared and more confident and they can make eye contact and be authentic about it and to engage with you. So there's just like small little nuances that I've learned that take more time, you know, now you need to be that much more prepared and, um, you know, you need to think through all the different ways that you can communicate before that meeting per se. But these are all just little things that allow you to better communicate and to engage and get your message across with people. Right. Now you mentioned uh, writing notes. Yes. Now there have been times where I have done interviews Mm -hmm. that are on Zoom or Teams. And as the interviewer is giving me information, I like to write that stuff down because sometimes it's hard to process everything Mm -hmm. in the moment. And so because I'm not actually looking at the screen, I usually will tell them I'm writing notes so that they understand, like, I didn't just suddenly, (laughs) you know, disengage here. I'm not paying attention to you. But if you're seeing the top of my head, it's because I'm writing notes down. (laughs) So I think it's important just to communicate that. Yes, it is. Because then people are more understanding. Yeah, or just to say, um, I have to step away for a minute. That's the reason why I'm going off screen. Like, it sounds silly, but there's... 
times are, I've seen people go off screen. It's like, where did they go? Did they fall out their chair? Like all of a sudden they, you know, and it's like, just simply put something in the notes or it's like a cordial behavior, right. you know, in uh, remote room behavior, if yes. you will, of how you should act. But yeah, if you are, especially if it's only two or three people on a, um, a phone a remote or what have you, like just tell them what you're doing. Like I've got to take some notes, so I'm going to be looking down or I'm going to be switching between my screens. So you might see me looking over here, but communicate that up front. So um, other people feel that you really are vested. And, you know, we talked a little bit early that, um, you know, there's so many times when you're presenting sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, individuals are not doing those things. Yeah. They're looking, you could tell they're looking down at something, whether it's a phone or what have you, they're looking at another screen or they, you know, they're tight and tense and they've got like a straight, stern face, you know, <laughs> and it could really mess with you as a yeah. presenter. You know, your mind is going like, they are not receiving this. They're not engaged. They can care less about what I have to say. And none of that may be true. Mm -hmm. Like they may be totally interested in they're taking notes or, you know, they're totally interested in that. It may be a heavy conversation and that's why they're looking like this. And, but that's not what you feel right. as a presenter. So there's, as a presenter, this is why it's important to pause mm -hmm. and to ask questions. Are you guys following me? Are you receiving this information? How's it coming across? So that helps you to yes. know, is this coming across the way that I think it is or is it not? But then also, if you are on the other side, you play a part. If right. you are on the side where you're being presented to mm -hmm. or you're just part of the team, you play a huge part in making sure that everybody's engaged too by how you come across on right. that screen and how you communicate to other individuals. Right. In part one, you mentioned over communicating. Yes. And I think that when you are on camera, that's like the perfect time to over communicate. Yes. Whether it, you are writing notes mm -hmm. or even if you're sharing your screen, sometimes it, it's good to say, oh, I'm going to go to this file yeah. or I'm going to jump to this tab. If you are mm -hmm. if you have like an Excel sheet, yeah. I've been in meetings where people have an Excel workbook yes. and they're jumping around and I'm just like, wait, wait, what, yeah, what just happened? <laughs> you know, and so you I have to over communicate. Yeah. I'm going to be moving from this tab to this yeah. tab or I just moved over to here or now I'm going sh to show you this. Yeah. You really do have to over communicate yeah. when you're in that type of environment. Otherwise, people get right. lost really quickly. Yeah. It's walking people through what you're doing. Exactly. It's what's in your head, being able to verbally articulate that to this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it. Um, I have a young lady that I coach that um, we work remotely and she works for her employer. Um, she's not off, often in the same office with them. And they have to use, I think, WhatsApp or what have you to communicate. Okay. And one of the things, you know, we're talking about in a Zoom meeting over communicating or body language, things like this. But it's the same thing if you have to communicate to your colleagues who are not, you're not seeing every day what it is that you're working on. And yeah. I really have, you know, just helped her to understand there's really, you know, before your day, at the end of your day communicating what you're doing and how you're doing it and why you're doing it is so important right. when you're not in an, an environment um, with the people you work with every yes. day. So it goes both ways, right. you know, because we're left to an assumption of what is this person working on? They're working from home. So are they engaged or not engaged? Are they really working? Yeah. <laughs> so like over communicating is so important remote period, whether you're in a Zoom meeting or you are working with colleagues that are all over the place, like just really, uh, we are left to our own mind games, right. you know, when we're remote and it, we're in a leadership position, and especially if we have people working for us, you are left to so many assumptions of, you know, is my team engaged? Are they not? Did they get it? Did they not? Are they going to get this to me? Are we on the same page? And you don't want to leave it to the big meeting or the big deliverable to find out that you were not on the same page. We were not engaged. We were not all working towards the same right. thing. And so over communicating is so important when you're in a remote setting and you're working remotely because it just helps everybody to march together and to make sure that you're reaching the same goal. Right. And this is such a great transition because 
another I think that's really important with remote work is keeping your team or in your case, your yeah. clients really motivated. Yes. And communication is such a vital part of that. Mm-hmm. And motivation is so key to you know employee retention, yes. client retention. Yeah. So what are some things that you do for your clients to maintain motivation? Motivation. I always go back to what is our goal. And what I mean by that is every time that we get together, at some point, whether it's the beginning or the end of our conversation, I reiterate what is our goal. What did we say that we wanted to do at the beginning of this endeavor, this Mm -hmm. project or this? Because that keeps us motivated because we might find ourselves at a very dark spot, very far away from what we thought, you know, this did not end up, but just getting everybody, you know, Stephen Covey said, think with the end in mind. And that is so powerful in today's environment because everybody's so busy and there's so many things. And so to keep people motivated, it's remind them, especially my clients, we just, we said that we wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you wanted to do this is because it's going to make you feel this way. It's going to help you get to this part professionally. It's going to help you get more integration in your life in this way. It's going to make you a better leader in this capacity. It's going to grow your business by X percent. It's going to help you, like whatever those results are, that in and of itself motivates people. It's like, oh yeah, that is just in the midst of everything we're going on. Right. Remind individuals what their goals are. And then we talked a little bit about values before. Yes. And um, I think it's also important to know and to lean into uh, what everybody's values are. And as, as like foo-foo as that may sound, it is important to know, like hold each other accountable. Like these are the things that we said we valued. And so therefore we wanna make sure that we're staying aligned with this. And that often helps to motivate individuals as well as, you know, yeah, you know what, that is really what's driving me and that's really why I'm here. Right. And that's a really good transition to with um, if you have like a team that you work with every single yes. day because mm-hmm. you want to create a team culture and that team culture can be built around, you know, what each person values and what the goal yes. is, not only your goal as a team, but yeah. your goal as a company. So that idea of what do you value, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't lose its potency yes. Even if you're in the corporate world and you have this team, yeah, you know, so like one of the things I try to do building culture is really making communication a priority Mm -hmm. and having one on ones because those one on ones are the perfect time to understand what is your goal and what do you value and what are you hoping to achieve? Right. Yeah. I mean, in an example, there's a a client that I work with that. he has a, a child that is just extra special to him. And knowing that for that reason, um, it really is important for me to bring that up sometimes mm-hmm. in hard conversations. You know, how is she doing? How yes. are things going? And that is like a simple way to break down some of the hard conversations that we're going to have and to motivate him to keep going. Right. So knowing what's going on in people's lives, and I think we mentioned that in part one, know what's going on in people's lives and what they value because that is a true motivator. And then another motivator, Nori, is uh, celebrating. Celebrating yes, I love successes, that. Right. whether they're big or they're small. Right. We have all walked through some tough times the past couple of years, and it has changed the dynamics of our leadership and how we lead as well as our relationships. And um, while we all care about the bottom line and we all care about all these things, you know, that are really have to do with um, making sure that our Um, careers and our businesses move forward, um, we still need to take a moment to celebrate each other. And that is like the quintessential motivation. That is the way to motivate individuals on the other side of the screen that you've never met, maybe in another country with a different culture. It doesn't matter what culture you are. Everybody loves to celebrate in some way, right? So uh, celebrating your teammates and your team members, celebrating your leadership and um, finding um, small ways to do it as a team, as well as the big wins, um, are always, always, always a great way to motivate people. Right. And I, I love that too, because 
when you take the time to celebrate wins that yeah. people have, people gain so much self-confidence yes. and, and it builds their worth mm -hmm. and it just reestablishes the value that they yes. bring as individuals. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 that means go so far. It's, it I think it's really huge. Yeah. And it keeps them engaged. You exactly. know, so much of, you know, the bottom line foundation of leading remotely is, the ability to build connections and to keep people engaged. That is what we want to do. Right. It's leadership, yeah, but it's about how are you going to connect with them and connect them, if you will, right, mm -hmm. in two different ways. And then how do you keep them engaged for the long haul? And so all these things we're talking about um, really go back to ways to really pull them in and keep them engaged. And so I'm excited about it. Yeah, I think it's super important too when you are working in a remote team to set expectations mm -hmm. because people yes. sometimes you know can misread what your expectation mm -hmm. is, or sometimes as a leader you may feel that someone isn't meeting that, yeah. but maybe it really fell on you because you weren't very clear, mm -hmm. you know, in in sharing that. So right. I think it's super important in order to build the culture is to you know set those expectations, yes. and as you mentioned before, like repeating things. Yeah. Over and over, over again. And over. <laughs> so yeah. people really understand yeah. what's expected of me and what can I expect right. in return. Yeah. In so many ways, all of us have become, um, we've all taken this learning curve of project management. Whether right. you are <laughs> formally the project manager or not, like if you are going to be in a remote setting with people, you've got to know how to manage that that dynamic, that project. And so um, going back to, yes, know what your goal is and, and so forth, but um, knowing how to interact in between those meetings or in between the opportunities that you connect, it's work that's got to happen offline. And so as you mentioned, you know, I think about... Um, all the different tools that are available to us now to help pe keep everybody engaged offline, you know, when they're not off online. And I just lean into a lot of those tools myself in my own business of how do I keep these individuals who we had a, this great hour and a half Zoom, you know, and everybody was motivated, but now they turn it off and they're going to cook dinner and they're going to do, you know, all the things that happen, but how do I keep them engaged and over communicating, bringing it forward to them, leveraging tools, shared tools have been awesome, whether it's, you know, Google Sheets and things like that, right. where we're able to literally get into the folders together mm -hmm. and to share, leveraging um, email as reminders, things like that. But it really has been just really um, knowing the type of people you're working with. There's a woman that I work with who is so, so busy. I mean, we're all busy, but she's like extra busy. Like her mind is always scattered. <laughs> and like, but I know that. Mm -hmm. I already know that. So, and we don't see each other face to face. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, she, it's not uncommon for her to miss something on her calendar. And so it requires me to extra effort to really lean into knowing her style and what she's got going on to really keep her engaged. And at the end of the day, I want her to have progress. You right. know, we all want to have accomplishments in the things that we're doing. So it really requires me to pull her along and to keep things in front of her in a different way. And that's been challenging in a remote environment, but um, I had to take the time to really know her and to know her challenges in order for us to be successful. Right, right. I think another key into keeping everyone motivated is feedback. Yes. We all need feedback yeah. and it's so important in order to measure you know, how far you've come, right. how far you still need to go, mm -hmm. if there's areas that you still need to work yeah. on. Feedback right. is so, right. so important. Yeah. As hard as it may be, whether yes. it's positive or negative, yeah. it sometimes can be difficult to be the person giving the yeah. feedback and sometimes receiving the feedback. It. Yeah, But absolutely. it's so important, especially, it you know, it's, it's important for growth. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so important to grow because... We just, you don't know what you don't know. It's, right. it's, there is a blessing in feedback because there's so many things that you want to do and you may pursue or think that you're doing and you just don't know what you don't know. So 
I always view feedback as, you know, give it to me because it helps me understand, um, but take it with a grain of salt. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, everyone, this concludes a part two of Leading Remotely. I hope that you took something away from this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will leave a comment and give us a like. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.